So if you manage to follow the instructions, we end at instruction number three, and we've got number four, basic WordPress tips. So those are things you should look at, but I'm going to distill them. I'm going to condense what I mean right here. We, we logged in to the dashboard. It has multiple names. Dashboard, backend, the admin screen, the control panel, various names. But I'll often be calling it the dashboard or the, or the backend. The dashboard is where we have all of these menu items, which we'll look at all of them. That's what we're going to be spending month one on, understanding everything that we've got with this software, creating content, getting good with WordPress. Then month two is when I'm going to focus on, let's add e-commerce features. So uh, here's in, we're in the dashboard, but only you would see this as an administrator. If I want to see this as a regular user, someone visiting my site, we would do this. On the top left corner, if you hover your mouse over the name of your site, mine is called Victor's Bakery, but if you hover over it, you will see Visit Site. Go ahead and click on Visit Site. And this is the front end. This is what it will look like to people. When someone visits your site, it's going to look like this. A nice sidebar and some content down here, and of course this will be fully customizable. But this is what it looks like. now. We're, we're logged in, so we've got this top bar over here, and on the top right it says Howdy Admin. We're, we're logged in as, a, as the administrator. If we were not logged in, we would not see that. This is the front end. So we're going to need to get used to going to the front end or the back end. Right now we're in the front end. This is what it looks like to people. If I want to go to the back end, you can hover your mouse over the name of your site again, and it says Dashboard or other quick shortcuts. So I'm in the front end, let's click Dashboard, so we go back to the back end. So let's get used to that, front end, back end. Dashboard, visit site. I might say like that, okay we made a change, let's visit site. That's my shorthand for, go up here, visit site. The thing about WordPress is, compared to other classic software for making a website is if this was a real live site, victor.com, on the real internet, any changes that I make to it would automatically show up for everyone uh, by default. So if, I make a, if, I'm working, <clears throat> if I'm working to make changes to the, uh, to the home page, if I'm thinking of ideas for the home page and I'm making changes, people will see those changes even if I don't want them to be live yet. Well, we're working on a test site, on a development site. It's not real. It's on localhost, which means on your computer. It's not out on the real internet. So I would recommend we do that, even if you've got a real site. Because we'll see a little bit later, if you've got a real site on the internet, you can make a copy of it and put it into web server and make changes here which will never affect your real live site. And my company, we do this all the time. We've got these various clients that I showed you. If we need to make big changes, we don't do it live where everyone can see it. We make a copy of the site, put it on our local host computer, and make changes there. Test it, find problems, fix those problems, and then if we want to, then upload our copy back to the live server. And we'll be talking about how to do all of that. If you want to jump ahead, it's in instruction number four. Right? I've got one, two, three, four. If you look at number four, it's how to make a copy of your site to transfer it, and vice versa, how to take it from your, from your local host computer up to your live server. That's number four. We'll get to it later. And number two here, what else? Uh, okay, visit front end, back end, etc. Okay. Uh, let me skip a little bit of what I've got here. We'll get back to it. Uh, because we've got this very powerful software. WordPress. All of these settings and features, page and posts, what's the difference? What is appearance? What are plugins? Etc. We'll look at them all. But one other thing I want to look at in detail early on is the settings. We can get started right away and create a great website, but there's many settings that I would recommend we look at first to have a site that is uh, 
that is uh, more optimized early on. And you don't have to change these settings very often. So if we set them right the first time, we won't have to deal with them later. Notice many of these items here, if you hover over, don't click, but if you hover over an item, you get a submenu. So there's going to be many menu items and sub-menu items. If you hover over settings, we're going to look at most of these right now. Let's go to settings, general. We'll look at the general settings in WordPress. This is where you can change the name of your site. When I went to visit site, if a person visits my site, they would see there, Victor's Bakery, just another WordPress site. This is where I can change those things. Site, Victor's Bakery. If I want to call it Famous Original Victor's Bakery, that's where I can change it. If I want to change it to uh, the tagline, the default tagline, just another WordPress site, I'm not. I'm not just another WordPress site. I'm a brand new, amazing site. So even though we're not going to get into some things in detail, I do mention some things. What I mean is, let me mention a little bit about SEO. In my SEO class, Search Engine Optimization, we go into more detail. But while we're here, I might as well mention it. Your tagline is an important piece of the puzzle for search engine optimization. SEO is the art and the science and the magic of doing positive things for your website so that it can be found by the search engines and therefore people. So having a tagline that is generically like every other WordPress site that gets installed brand new is not going to help you. You want to use this tagline to craft one sentence that explains what your site is, keeping in mind the keywords of your site. Again, in the SEO class, we go into more detail about setting up your keywords and such. But in short, what's one sentence that you can think of that explains your site and mentions one or two keywords of your site? Example, Victor's Bakery. Some of my keywords are cupcakes, cookies, baked goods, uh, gluten-free. You know, I can think of 10 keywords that I would think that people would search on Google or Bing or Yahoo to find my site. Maybe people are looking for bakeries in East Lake, California. Those are my keywords. So once I've got my set of keywords, I'm going to think about where can I add those keywords throughout my site. And one of the places is the tagline. So if I were to think of writing here, East Lake Bakery. That is a minimal basic tagline. If I were giving you a grade, that would be a C minus. Um, a better grade on this would be family owned bakery in the heart of East Lake, California. There's also one in Michigan, I think. Yes, it's going to be in the header content, the meta tag. Maybe somewhere else as well, or they just call it tagline? It would also, depending on the theme, show up visually somewhere. On my theme, it shows up right there. Yeah. On some themes, it might be in the footer or not at all. But it'll still be in the code, and the search engines would still see it. Okay, but it'll only be one place in the code. No, I can't say that. Depending on the theme, and I'm going to say that many times throughout the course, okay. depending on the theme, these things show up or not. So this is a better one. I would give myself an A-plus on this uh, because this is uh, this has got those keywords. Bakery, Eastwood, yes. But it's also specific as in uh, it's trying to reach an audience. Um, here I'm trying to reach an audience that cares about family-owned, local-sourced, um, you know, um, small business friendly and such this SEO art and science and magic and so this is part of that this sentence here explains what my business is literally literally and figuratively and that's an art and a science yes Search engines know that family owned and bakery are the keywords, and each link that as opposed to end up. 
Usually the search engines omit what are known as stop words, and stop words are in, the, is, at, you know, these very basic connective words, and the search engines focus on the unique words, family owned, East Lake, bakery. It's going to ignore to some degree the, and in, and of. So the search engines are smart enough to choose the, the ones that are real, the real keywords. And the search engines want us to not only optimize for the search engines, but really optimize for people. They don't want us to mechanically write seven keywords here. That would be great for the search engines, but bad for people. Therefore, you get penalized. The search engines want you to optimize for people, and then the search engines will follow along. What about the unique family? Would unique be considered a search? It would. It would. It would, but... Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm, I was about to say. On a technical level, it would look at it as a keyword, but not very strongly because it is cliched. So that's why I'm saying here family owned. That's not that common. Maybe I'm also mentioning here, uh, you know, uh, authentic old world recipes. You know, what are the keywords that someone might find me at? And this is not the only place to think about that. It's going to be throughout our whole site. That's why that SEO class is a whole class. But while we're here on this tagline, we should think about it. You might not know what to write right now, and that's okay, because I've just got this fake website that I'm making up. You may have a real website that you're working on here, or not. That's okay. But you also want to use a tagline for, especially if the name of your company is very esoteric. Victor's Bakery, you can tell what it is because it's in the name. PMD Interactive, that's esoteric. No one knows what it means. Esoteric means no one knows what it means. Therefore, the word esoteric is esoteric, isn't it? But PMD Interactive, what does that mean? Then I'd better make sure I wrote in my tagline here, web design company in San Diego. Right? Something that explains what the company is, if it's not obvious in the title. Question? I can't change right now the sitting titles. Do you have them? This one? Yes. Can I change it? Sure. Okay. Right now it's my example, but you can put whatever you'd like. Okay. WordPress address and site URL. These are kind of advanced, so don't worry about it. Uh, but if you're an advanced person, you can follow that link to explain why you might want to change those. Don't worry about changing it. Email address is where you can change your email address. Membership. Built in, WordPress has the ability for people to register into your site to create an account, which is very useful. Right now it's off by default. We won't turn it on yet, but make a note that that's in the settings general. We can let people create an account on our site and they have different levels of control. Default role, subscriber to administrator with increasing levels of control. Right now we are administrators. We can add and remove anything on our site. Pages, pictures, products, people, anything. The lower levels let you do less things. So we'll get to that later, but if you Let's say you, you uh, are the owner of your company, but you also want to give a couple of other people access to log in to update the prices, let's say. We have different levels. Editor, for example, or author that will let you do that. And not administrator, which will let you delete a user. So we don't, I didn't change anything on membership or, or role, but that's where you find them. Time zone, we should set our time zone properly so that we can get notifications on a timely basis and such. UTC0, where in the world is that? That's Greenwich Mean Time, which is London. We're not in London, last time I checked. So what's our UTC offset? Who cares? Let's look for Los Angeles. Let's look for Los Angeles. It's negative 8. Los Angeles, close enough. San Diego, Los Angeles, Pacific time. Instead of trying to find it scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, just click on the box one time and start typing LOS, and it should jump you to Los Angeles. Click on the box where it says UTC0.
you know, click on the time zone box and then start typing LOS. This is also going to be relevant if we do blogging. If we leave it on London time, then it's going to say, why, why are these people writing their blog posts at 2 in the morning? It might not matter, but I would set the proper time zone. Date format, you can change that if you'd like. I'm going to leave it alone. Time format, I'll also leave it alone. You can change it if you want. Week starts, I'm going to leave that alone. Change it if you want. And your site language, it's in English. You can change that if you want. Any questions on this screen? Yes. Uh, good question. I believe it's it's like two things. One is this, but this doesn't mean it's going to translate your site to different languages. Unfortunately, okay. then a plugin does come into play. Okay. This is to change. You know, uh, so that the Italian Google finds you, so that the uh, Japanese Bing finds you, and such. Uh, the actual content of it is still up to you to provide or to use a plugin. Okay, and then just work on the search engine optimization separately. Yes. Google mm -hmm. If you made any changes on this screen, you want to click Save Changes. Remember to save changes. under the settings on writing, I mean under the settings on the left here. Let's skip writing, it's not that important just yet. Let's go over to reading. Let me show you something here. I'll show you three examples of websites, WordPress websites. Okay, this website is a classic WordPress website, a classic blog website. What that means is you've got the home page, and on the home page you've got the latest blog post, July 28th. Below that is the previous blog post, May 17th, and below that is the later one, and the later one, and the later one, and then you go to the previous pages. This is a classic blog site. The home page changes every time when it gets updated. When you add a new blog, it pushes the old one down. That's the classic blog style. We've got this style. This is the home page. It's a static home page. The slideshow is moving, yes, but that's not what it means. What it means is when something new is added, it doesn't necessarily change the home page. So this home page is static. You're always basically going to see this text here, and the phone number, and the links. And this, maybe the slideshow up here, the pictures change, but that's still, it's a static home page. And then, between those two extremes, those two sides of the coin, in the middle, you've got this website, where it's static home page, and yes, you're going to see these things change here once in a while, and the slideshow. But it's static in that most of the front content doesn't really change. But it's hybrid because it's also got a blog. And that corner of the home page changes when there's a new blog post. So we've got the classic blog style. We've got the static site style. And we've got the hybrid style. It's a little of both. The great thing is that WordPress can create all three of those types of sites. And that's what we're seeing here under reading. Front page. I, I kind of don't like the, the wording of it. It should be, what would you like your front page to display? So front page displays. The front page would display either your latest posts, like a classic blog site, or a static page. The default is classic blog. Static pages oftentimes what people will want 
but we still cannot set it yet because it says, okay, if you choose a static home page, a static page, what is the front page, what is the home page you're going to display, and where are you going to put your blog posts? We don't have any placeholders yet. We don't have a home page page to display as the front page. And we don't have a blog placeholder page to display the blogs. That's what this Texcoco website is. It's got a home page <coughs> placeholder, and then all of the blog posts go to the blog page. Whereas this one, the home page and the blog page are the same thing. And whereas in this one, there is no blog, just a home page, a static home page. So here, Keep this in mind, make a note, and we'll do it later. This is the place where I would set blog homepage, static homepage, or hybrid. But I can't set hybrid or static yet until I have placeholders. We'll create those later. So those are the three sides of the coin of WordPress. And yes, coins have three sides. The edge. Yes? Yes, for the hybrid you would select static, you would then select a home page and a blog page slideshow. Now, to get it to look more like this example site, this is also an extra step of using a plugin. Because then the now the blog is visible on its own blog page, yes, but it's also visible on the home page and that's an extra plugin, which we'll talk about. So you said for the static page, static. Yeah. So we're gonna leave this as, as the default, your latest posts, because we can't use static yet. If you are then doing a blog site, you can tell it how many blog posts to show on the home page. Right there it says 10. This example site shows 3. 1, 2, 3, next page. 1, 2, 3, next page. So you can put whatever you'd like right there. SEO-wise, there isn't really any negativity here except for if you have like 10 per page and your blog posts are really long, you're going to need, the user is going to need to download a lot. And if your site is slow, that could affect your SEO. So I would recommend here to have five posts. You might even do a blog, so it doesn't even matter, perhaps. But I would say five posts at a time, therefore not a lot downloads and therefore slows down your site. Syndication feed and article feed are related. Let's look at article feed here first. People can subscribe to your blog. And that's built into WordPress. Very cool. Um, and you want to decide, are we going to send, when you post a brand new blog post, do you want to send your subscribers the whole text or a summary? I would recommend a summary because they're going to get their email. It's going to have a few sentences of the post and then it's gonna say read more and that'll take them back to your website because if you take the SEO class and the blogging class we talk about that every website should have a blog even a Mexican food restaurant site you think well why what am I gonna read on that restaurant site what what I wanna buy the food why what would I read if you go to the blog and read this is a Mexican food restaurant but it's not doesn't have California burritos and nachos and the usual Tex-Mex stuff. This is authentic Mexico City style lamb barbecue, slow roasted lamb barbecue. And therefore, the articles in this blog explain that. They explain the history of the food. How many of you have heard of before today pulque? No one. Read that blog post and you'll see that this is a traditional alcoholic beverage made from the maguey plant. The maguey plant is one of the ingredients and seasonings of the meat. So that ingredient is then fermented into an alcoholic beverage that is classic Mexican alcoholic beverage. Uh, you might have heard of the agave plant. What does the agave graduate to? Tequila. Tequila. The cousin, 
the McGee plant also graduates to an alcoholic beverage, pulque, and this restaurant sells it. So then you'll see other articles here about the craft beer sold and the the style of slow roasting and and the aguas frescas. No, tequila is still higher. Tequila is still higher. Not that, not that high. It's like probably like ten, probably like ten percent. Calories, not so bad. You guys want to be tasters? Go down to the restaurant and tell them Victor sent you. So that's what we're using the blog post here to educate people on the food and the beverages and everything. And that's helping the SEO because if you start looking for Mexican food, they, they come up a lot or other keywords because there's this content and that's the, in short, you know, putting it all distilled at its core, the reason you blog is to put more of your content online to get found. So the more you blog, the more content that comes out there, the more the search engines can find you. Getting back to this, you want subscribers to your blog, but if they get the whole post in their email, what incentive do they have to come back to your site? If you only put a summary, read more, and they're interested, they'll go back to the website, they'll read the article, they'll get hungry just like everyone is right now, and then you will click order online. So you come back to the website to accomplish the sale, book a table, uh, inquire about catering, or whatever it is you're trying to do online. But that's the whole art and science and magic of SEO, and that's one of the little things here. Entice people to come back to your, to your website with a summary. And only send them, you know, three headlines, not all ten of them, two or three or five headlines so that they come back to the site. <clears throat> this is where we would go back to remove the search engine thing. When we set up WordPress a little while ago and we turned off that check mark, this is where we can turn it on or off, uh, although it's kind of backwards, like when we vote. A vote yes on this will mean no, we won't fund that. Yes. Uh -huh. So what happens if um, in between when we check it, does the row number of items we have there mean that possibly some posts do not get sent to other news organizations? Yes. Like however often the feed runs, if it runs hourly, but you put up 10 posts in an hour and it's only going to send these? Yes. Yeah, but a person's not going to want to look at all I'm seven not posts. That I'm, I'm, not I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, and I'm giving an example of what why you would want to think about it this way. So if we had all seven posts being shown or all ten posts, yeah, they wouldn't see it's all of this. No. Okay. Cool. So here under discouraged search engines. Um, this is where you would turn it on or off to be sh to be visible by the search engines or not, but it's not foolproof. Notice it says it's up to the search engines to honor it or not. This doesn't mean if you turn this on that you will be hidden from the internet. This just means that the search engines won't, won't find you, possibly. If you make any changes here, remember to save changes. So explain that um Search engine visibility is search engine Nowadays, what that mean? You, you don't want to not be found one of them. Yeah, that, that's what I was. That's what I was saying about the like when we vote and we wrote a vote yes on this will not fund that thing. You know, when that happens, this is sort of that. If you turn this on, if you yes turn this on, that means no, don't find me from by the search engines. If we don't have it on, that means yes, let the search engines find me. But isn't that what you want? Yeah, and as I said earlier, as a testing site, it doesn't matter oh, because we're just a testing site. But if we're on a real live site, a real .com, .net, whatever, then I would not want this on. I would want the search engines to find me. Yeah, okay. Right now, it doesn't really matter. But I'm, I just turned it on on purpose so that we remember to turn it off when we're live as a real site. Well, would that even be an option on a live site? Like you click, click it. It could be that I'm going to do major updates to my site and I don't want the search engines to see that. Um, I sort of want 
to be under the radar for a bit as I update my site extensively and then after I've made those changes reactivate it and get my traffic going again. So isn't this the purpose of the uh, virtual site is to make all the changes virtually without affecting the online site? And yeah. Maybe. Yeah, so in a sense, they, they might even remove that feature eventually because it almost seems not that useful on a real live site. One possibility would be, again, not to get found on a real site. But not everyone knows about working on a virtual site like us. They might just stay online and say, well, I guess i got to turn that off when I make my changes. Mm -hmm. But for us that know about the virtual site, this is uh, not that useful. Mm -hmm. Let's look under Settings Discussion. Lots of options here, but I, I won't mention all of them, just the important ones that I would recommend. Um, at the top we've got default article settings. One that is turned off that I would recommend to turn on, attempt to notify any blogs linked to from the article. Part of SEO, search engine optimization, is how many links are coming from other people's websites. So if another website links to my website, the search engines see that and they say that's good. This site is good enough or interesting enough popular enough that people are linking to the site. Therefore, let's give them an edge over their competitor who has no links coming back. Backlinks. So here, if we activate this, our WordPress site will announce itself to another WordPress site. There's a link from our site to your site. Now, I said backlinks are good. My link to another site is not so relevant because I could put a thousand links on my site. The search engines don't take that much into consideration. They take into account a thousand links coming to my site, not a thousand links going out. But via SEO and other tactics, if we write a blog post, and in the blog post I mention another relevant website, another restaurant, there's a link from my website to their website. WordPress, if I turn this on, will let that site know there's a link, we've linked to you. So that is in the hopes that that other site links back. If the whole idea is getting site links from other websites, this is one of the ways to help get a link back because now we've linked to a site, we might get a reciprocal link. It's not an exact science, but it is helpful. So I would say turn that on. The next the next one is on, allow link notifications from other blogs. Yes, I want to know when another site links to my site. So it's on. The reason for that, we'll talk about it in the SEO class, but I want to know when a site links to me, and I want to let another site know when I link to them. Right here in the WordPress dashboard, you're going to have, I believe it's in comments, even though it doesn't make sense that it would be a comment. I believe it's under comments. It's going to show you a list of here of who is connected to your site. And that's only on the WordPress site. Mm -hmm. Which is 20% market share, which is hundreds of millions of sites. Uh, allow people to post comments. This, uh, you'll need to decide what to do about this, but by default, this would either be great or terrible. By default, people can add a comment to any page of your site. The home page, the about page, the contact page, the blogs, etc. So, the good thing about that is there's some importance regarding SEO for people to be able to comment on your site. I don't know how much, I can't tell you a percent or anything, it's a trade secret from the search engines. But if your site can have comments and activity and such, that helps you a bit. The problem is then if any person can write comments on your site, that means any spammer can write comments on your site. So that's why this being on by default might be terrible, because now it could open my site to spammers. So what I would say about this, I would turn this off until I talk about later a plugin that will help us manage the spam. By default, we're kind of naked here, letting anyone comment on our site. I'm going to turn it off, and later we'll turn it back on with a plugin.
question. If you had to use this, <coughs> would you have had the option, like with other plugins, of blocking certain verbiage, like bad words or? You mean down at the bottom here? Oh. Wait. Was that your question about blocking keywords? Yeah. yeah. About blocking, like, if somebody were you yeah, it'll be it'll be a section over here under comment blacklist or okay. moderation. Great. Let's see other settings. These are all good, so you can you can look th you can look this up yourself. Uh, what do these sections mean? Other comment settings. How do you look it up? You've got help on the top right corner. Every screen is going to help it have a help button and it'll either give you quick information or it'll give you links to the uh, to the documentation or the support forums which takes which take you back to wordpress.org so if I don't quite mention something check the help on your own but those defaults that are on under comment settings are fine email me whenever these are fine also if we had the ability for people to comment um, I would get an email when someone makes a comment couple that with before a comment appears comment must be manually approved that one's not on so that's why I think by having on anyone can post a comment but not having on approved I don't think that's so good I would turn on comment must be manually approved. That is, I'm going to get an email, which is set right here, I'm going to get an email that says a new comment on your post. And I will get a preview of it right in my email, and then the option approve, deny, spam. So from my email I can just click spam and it never shows up on my site. I can click approve right from the email and it shows up on my site. I can click deny and then I didn't spam it but then it didn't show up on my site. So that's what I would say. Turn that one on. Comment must be manually approved. And we'll still leave the other one off for the moment. We'll talk about another plugin later. Comment moderation. These are keywords to block and such. Moderation and blacklist. Moderation is that you will get an email to approve it or deny it. Blacklist is it will not show up at all. The problem with this, unfortunately, is it's way too, it's way too general in that it says if you put the keyword press, it would hit people that wrote the word press and the people that were wrote WordPress, which I think is way too you know, nuclear option. There's another plugin that we can deal with, so I think the, this comment moderation keywords thing here, I don't think it's as useful as it could be. Avatars and all of that, no need to change that. Just click save at the bottom. We can skip media for the moment, those settings are fine, and we'll look at one more setting, permalinks. Depending on your WordPress, the default option here might be default. Ours seems to be custom structure. But oftentimes the default will be default. What this is saying is we would have a website, victor.com, and every page, its address, its URL up here, the address, every page would then be visible via its database number because our whole WordPress site exists on top of a database. Everything. Uh, pictures, text, products, pages, everything's a database number. And so oftentimes in WordPress the default is default. That you will visit a website, victor.com, and if I want to go to the about page, it'll be victor.com slash 123. If I go to the products page, it'll be victor.com slash 5797. That default is terrible for SEO. This number is gibberish. It means nothing to the search engines. The search engines would rather your website say victor.com slash contact, victor.com slash shop, not the numbers. 
So ours uh, confirmed, was yours also set on custom structure like, like mine? Okay, so custom structure um, seems to be a little bit better. It's going to show the year and the month of the, of the item, which is better still than just a generic number. We're not going to change anything here just yet, but make a note when we actually do it next time. I would recommend the one you really want is post name. Notice how it's going to look. The name of your site slash the name of your page. Instead of the name of your site slash archive and a number, worthless, the name of the month and such, that one's okay. That one's okay too. Default is terrible. Numeric is terrible. Custom could be good depending how it's set up. But the one you're never going to fail with is post name. But we won't turn it on yet. We need to set another option. Just make a note. Later, we will use this one. Because I will have human readable names in your address instead of numbers. And the search engines like that. Websites that have human readable names in the addresses. Don't worry about optional here, but just make a note. Don't make any changes. But later we'll set this to post name. So I wanted to spend some time this first day looking at some of these settings. We're going to set these settings and then we won't have to deal with them again really after that. But if we never looked at them, we never set them, we might not have the most optimized site. We might be open to spam. We might not have an optimized permalink structure. We'll look at these settings again later, but I wanted to touch on them now. And so what we're going to do is, I'm going to end the main lecture in just a moment. The class goes until 4, and usually I give a open lab time at the end. I want to mention a couple more things, then we'll end. Um, the main thing is that, well, we've done this work. We set, up, we set up a database. We installed WordPress. We played around with settings and such. If we were to go home and come back next time, and you sat on the same computer, and you tried to go back to localhost slash WordPress, there would be nothing there. Remember, everything that we do on these computers erases. That's why you want to bring a flash drive to take your work with you. What we've done today is not so important that you have to take it with you. And unfortunately, it's not going to be a simple matter of dragging it from our computer to yours. We have to go through a little bit of a process, which is all detailed in sheet number four. We won't do it today, and that's okay. It's good to do practice. We're going to start over one more time next time. But after that, we will not start over every time. So if you want to start looking at sheet number four for next time, that's what we're going to do. We're going to archive our site to take it with us, because when we copied the WordPress site, it was like 1,000 files. After we installed it, it's even more. And the database. And we cannot simply drag that WW folder to our flash drive and go home. It's not, not that easy. It's in the instructions. We'll do it together next time. So whatever we've done today, we're going to lose, but we didn't really do too much. And it's okay to do parts of it again because we're going to need to. So what we're going to do then is we're going to end the main lecture. There's still a little bit that I skipped here that you might want to do specifically for C, just to practice a little. You don't have to if you don't want to. But if you do some of this, you will, you will get a little bit more experience. When we come back next time, we're going to get up get our project up and running again faster today we spent a lot of time in theory and not enough practice next time will be all practice and then we'll actually start to learn more about WordPress what's a post what's a page what's an optimized title and so forth and uh, then we'll save our site next time and we'll be able to take it with us so that you can work on it at home or come back to it next week and so what I would recommend these classes this class at least it doesn't have any homework, it doesn't have any grades, it doesn't have any certificate or final test or anything. It's personal fulfillment, personal enrichment, job training and such. You get what you get out of it, what you put into it. And so I would recommend at home, try to set up WAMP server, try to set up WordPress on your Windows or Mac. Try to do steps one and two like we did together. 
because we're going to do parts of them again next time. And the more you're comfortable with this, the faster we can get started to do more new stuff. Any general questions for today? Yes? If you just have it on here and you want to go work on it at home, you have a Mac at home, yeah. and you've done all that and set it up there, can you take the flash drive? And then yeah. Yeah, this will be cross-compatible. The only difference is here we're running WAMP server, and at home you'll be running MAMP server. Mm -hmm. Besides that, your site will be compatible. Products and pages, everything. You just need the underlying software. WAMP or MAMP. And it's in the instructions in the Mac folder. Can you get the site PHP database from Yeah, from yeah. It's just different ways to run a virtual server on Windows or Mac. All right, so we'll end at the moment. We'll do it again next time.